Oh, well, hopefully I'm not too loud and obnoxious in, the, in this head. What's up, fuzz faces? Jay Fox here, and today we're going to be talking about religion. More specifically, we're going to be talking about something that I've noticed a surprising amount of in this fandom, and that is actually Christians. Now, as many of you know, I myself am a Christian, and when I joined the fandom, I did not expect there to be so many other Christian furries in this community. And when I started a YouTube channel and started meeting some of you guys on Discord, I really just keep meeting more Christian furries. So I thought that now would be a good time to address a question that's weighed on my heart for a long time, and that's, can you be a furry if you're a Christian? Now this is a really difficult question to answer, and I've heard a lot of different takes and a lot of different answers to this question from both furries and non-furries who know about or are in the fandom. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I can't give you a straight up yes or no answer. It really depends on why you're in the fandom, what your relationship with God is like, and how the fandom affects your heart as a person. What I can do, however, is just give you some background about my journey through the furry fandom as a follower of Christ. So that's what I'll do. Now, obviously I wasn't always a furry, and I also wasn't always a Christian. See, I wasn't really raised in a Christian home per se. I had been to church a few times as a kid, when my mom used to take us. My dad was never really religious, but then we fell out of it, and I kind of just grew up in a regular household. So I would argue that I was probably a furry before I was a Christian, although my experience with being a furry before a Christian is a unique one because I basically was someone who fit the textbook def- okay, well maybe this isn't very unique, <laughs> but I was basically someone who fit the textbook definition of a furry without having any idea that there's a whole community around this and that other people are interested in it. I really think I was someone as a kid who was predisposed to being a furry for a lot of the same reasons that many of you all know. Growing up with cartoons and liking animal characters and animation styles in general. But I'd say my major furriness started around middle school when I full on came up with a fursona and started getting really into the idea of anthropomorphic foxes. Go figure. <laughs> Whatever it is in our furry brains that makes us go, hmm, yeah, I like that. The pathologian, if you will. <laughs> I'll see myself out. But anyway, I totally had that. Like, it was in my heart, totally hooked on anthropomorphic animals and all that. I even had my own fursona before I knew what the heck a fursona was or that anyone else was interested in these kinds of characters. It was a black fox character and I was so enthralled with him and identified with him so much I literally wanted to be this fox. Thankfully, this all happened before I was a Christian, and I'm going to explain why I say thankfully in a moment. But anyway, I discovered Jesus when I was in maybe about my junior, senior year of high school. It was probably my junior year of high school. Um, but I found Jesus. I was having a really hard time with some mental health stuff, and I really felt the need to go to church and learn what God was all about. Because I had always heard of God, and I had always kind of wanted to believe in God, but never really engaged with it. So I ended up going to youth group, going to church, and learning who Jesus was, and he saved my life. I totally became a Christian. And some of you, if you're a Christian, you might know that the Bible talks about dying to yourself when you follow Christ. And that might be something that's confusing for those of you who aren't Christians or maybe just aren't familiar with the concept. But basically, when you come to find God, you realize that a lot of the things your heart desires are not holy, they're not of God. And really, you know, if I'm being honest, furry, well, I didn't know what furry was, but my attraction to anthropomorphic animals was not something that was of God. And so when I came to Christ, I kind of just dropped it. Like, I didn't even really have to think about it that much. It just wasn't of God. It wasn't good. I forgot about it. It was something that would have totally taken my heart away from Christ and s separated me from God like sin does. I mean, we serve a holy God, and that word holy is thrown around a lot, 
But what it actually means, and I'll pull up the Greek and Hebrew terms for it here. I'm not going to try to pronounce them, but they actually mean to be set apart. And that's really what happens to a Christian when you follow Christ, is you set your life apart from these things that aren't of God. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, well, that's good for you, Jay, but what the heck are you doing sitting here in a fursuit if you totally let go of all of that? And to that, I would say, stop it. It's rude to interrupt people. But you remember how I've been saying that I didn't actually know what the furry fandom was or that there was a whole community around it for until after I came to Christ. So let's fast forward to near the end of my senior year of high school after I'd started following Christ and started living my life according to Jesus, I did what any young would-be furry would do in 2017, and I found myself some Vine compilations, some videos about the fandom, and of course a specific red strawberry fox that we all know and love. And this was really an interesting experience for me because I was watching these videos and learning about the furry community just thinking, oh my gosh, that, that's me, or that was me. I totally relate to this. You know, a lot of us hear about the furry fandom because of the costumes, and we immediately think that, oh, they're a bunch of weirdos who dress up and do stuff in animal costumes. And that's like sort of what I had heard about the fandom. <clears throat> but when I actually found these videos, I was like, whoa, this is, this is me. <laughs> so looking back, I didn't realize this at the time, but I think the whole situation gave me a unique opportunity to come into the fandom, learn about the fandom, in a way that wasn't like where it's all up in your heart. I had, I had dropped that. I, I wasn't engaging with that. Uh, so learning about this fandom to where I knew exactly what it was all about, but I'm not really, my heart isn't really in it. What, I, what I'm trying to say is I think the whole situation gave me an opportunity to kind of come into this fandom for the things that aren't idolizing it. Kind of like when you first learn about the fandom, you've got that fresh set of eyes and you think, oh, the fursuiting looks really fun, the conventions look fun, the people are nice, that kind of thing. The things that aren't idolizing it, looking at the art and being like, oh my gosh, I want to be that. You know, it just gave me this unique opportunity to come into the fandom in a different way. And I think today that God might have set me up like that for a reason. The heart of this fandom is celebrating the absolute affinity for anthropomorphic animals. And I've determined that that's wrong. That's not of God. But the community and the people and going to cons, fursuiting, making videos, they have these kind of nostalgic feelings. They're, they're, they're just fun. They're not something that I think is bad. And I have for years now felt kind of drawn and called to this community in this way that isn't idolizing it. And so that's why I'm here. That's why I'm making these videos, because I watch videos like this and I really enjoyed them in a healthy way. And I do feel called here. I think whether it's to share the gospel or just to have something that's fun to do, it's kind of a gift from God. <laughs> Now, I should also say that this kind of realization of how I, got in, how I got involved with the fandom came to me over years and years, because when I first found the fandom, I didn't really know to separate the, the deep feelings of connection with anthropomorphic animals that I shouldn't be a part of from the fun, entertaining sides of the fandom that maybe I should be a part of. So I would just come to God in prayer and ask, is this okay? And a lot of the answers I got early on were no, because I was asking about the strong feelings towards the fandom I had that were separating me from God. And of course, those aren't going to line up with the Lord's will. And so when you bring them in prayer, it's just like, whoa, no, there's a big separation between that and God. And that's not to say that if you feel that way, you're wrong. I mean, obviously, I felt that way. I would still feel that way if I let myself. But my identity isn't in my heart's lusts anymore. It's in Christ. And Christ has been gracious enough to give me this opportunity to enjoy this fandom in a healthy way. And I'm still learning how to navigate that. And I'm still learning if that's 100% the case. And I think a lot of my doubts in that department come from unhealthy places with OCD and things like that. But that's a topic for a whole nother video. Now we don't have time to unpack all of that. This is going to be fun to edit. <laughs> it's a lot of rambling.
But yeah, so at the end of the day, if you're a Christian, should you or can you be a furry? I don't know. I just work here. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think the answer to that is go to God and talk to him about that. You, you need to have a solid relationship with him before you can understand things like that. And again, these are all things that I still think about and struggle with on a very regular basis. I'm still learning my faith and, and how to follow and do God's will. So if you're a Christian who's in the fandom or who's interested in the fandom, my advice to you would be seek God's will first. And it might be really difficult, but if you let go what you, of what you want and draw close to him, he'll make it clear. You'll know what's right and what's not, what's of him and what isn't. It says in Matthew chapter 3, I believe it's verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. This is talking about like worldly things and necessities, but it totally applies here too. If you're thinking about heavenly things first, what you need on earth is going to be added to you. And furry may or may not be one of those things. But if it's not, that's okay. If you're following God's will, you're going to have what you need and you'll be where you need. And that seriously might not always look like what you think it does. Another great verse that kind of encapsulates furry and Christians is... Hang on, I gotta find it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's 1 Corinthians 10.23. I believe I got that right. Uh, and it says something along the lines of, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. And that means that, as a Christian, Christ sets us free. But just because we have that freedom doesn't mean that anything we do is going to be useful or helpful in our faith. And furry is totally one of those things. It might be for you. I'm starting to believe it is for me. It might not be for you. And if it's not, that's totally okay. And if you don't even have a solid relationship with God or one at all, I would recommend that you start there. Start going to church, read your Bible. That's what I did. And that's how I came to Christ. I learned about all these things and it was amazing. And it totally changed my life. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Trust me, it's not. But it's so worth it. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was a pretty long rambly video, but it's kind of nice to just sit down and talk for a video sometimes. I like doing it. Um, but I hope that helped y'all, and I hope you found it interesting. That's just sort of my journey as a Christian in the furry fandom. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, your experiences in the fandom as a Christian, non-Christian, whatever. Just let me know what you think of this kind of thing. Anyway, I love y'all. It's been Jay Fox, and I'll catch you next time.